Hello and welcome to Equa. In this example, we'll examine the advanced level of IDIs and see how we can connect the model to measured boundary conditions in order to get a meaningful comparison between measured and modeled variables. This is something that is very useful during the measurement and verification phase of a building. It is also valuable for understanding the model and improving the model approach in future projects. The building of this example consists of five stories with offices, a basement with the HVAC plant room, and a top store with a lunch and a conference room. There are three stairwells, and the facade consists of 100% glass. This building is cooled by a slab system consisting of pipes immersed into the intermediate concrete floors and cooled by seawater. In the slab system form, we define the design power, the temperature difference at design power, the control strategy, in this case, the supply temperature is controlled, so we choose the always-on strategy. Some other parameters, including the location in the slab, is also defined. Let's move to the advanced level, where all the component models may be reached. One of the real benefits of IDIs is that the equations, variables and parameters of all the different component models may be scrutinized in detail and each time-dependent variable may be logged. For example, we can open the coil layer model in this lab and easily log each variable to any log object. The T-slab variable is the temperature of the heated or the cooled layer. To calibrate the model, we need to choose a weather file for the measurement and verification period. In this case, the weather data comes from a weather station located a few kilometers away. The weather files consist of hourly values of temperature, humidity, wind, and solar radiation. For this specific project, we have trend data monitored in the energy management and control system of the building for more than a year. In the model, we have replaced set points, schedules, and internal loads with measured boundary conditions for the verification period. External data is connected through the source file object. The source file object refers to an ordinary text file and the variables may be connected to any variable in the model. In the air handling unit we control the exhaust air energy recovery device, the heating coil and the cooling coil by letting the measured temperatures be the set points in the model. Also, the airflow rate is controlled by measured data. Moreover, the model is controlled to maintain measured values of the supply water temperature to the slabs, the supply water temperature to the baseboard heaters, and the internal loads in each thermal zone as measured by electrical meters. We already simulated the model and can go directly to the result tab. Looking at the outdoor air temperature, we can see that the temperature measured by the local sensor in the energy management and control system is about 2 degrees higher than the temperature in the weather file, so the weather data is obviously not quite representative for the location of this building.
comparing the measured and the model return air temperatures, we can see that the agreement is fair during daytime when the air handling unit is operating. During non-operating periods, the sensor located in the duct reads lower temperatures, probably due to infiltration of cold air due to leaking dampers and buoyancy forces in the duct. During summer, the agreement is better. The model return slab temperature is quite close to its measured counterpart. For the district heating, the agreement is quite good for some days, while other days are not as good. On a yearly basis, the deviation between the modeled and the measured heating energy is about 2%. But more interesting is to scrutinize week by week to see the agreement. Thank you for your attention.